Your tickets to the NCAA championship meet are on the line today in Ann Arbor as we have reached the regional final day. This will be the first of four regions around the country that will find out which two teams will advance past this stage. Jason Ross Jr. alongside Kennedy Baker. Kennedy, we started with eight teams. We're down to four. Let's look at the teams that have advanced and begin with Penn State. Penn State had an incredible performance on Thursday, beating out the host team, Michigan, in their performance. Then flip it over, Alabama. So much history within that program. They've made a regional final once again this year. Ohio State also having a riveting com competition on Thursday, edging out Illinois in their bracket, making it to the Saturday competition. You think April, you think Oklahoma excellence, the reigning two-time national champs over the last couple of years. They're trying to get back to the stage that they've been so familiar with over the past several years under K.J. Kindler. Let's take once again a look at the different regions around the country. So the Michigan Regional, Oklahoma, Alabama, Ohio State, Penn State have advanced from the regional semifinals to today. You see your other regions around the country, Florida, California, and Arkansas. Two teams out of each of these regions will advance to the championship meet. And we're going to find out today who those teams will be from the Michigan Regional. Jason Ross Jr., Kennedy Baker with you. Kennedy, we examine our group of teams. Maybe one team that jumps out is perhaps the underdog entering Thursday semifinals. It was Penn State, and they were able to leapfrog their way into today. What did you think of their performance? Penn State had an incredible competition on Thursday. They did an impressive job getting landings led by head coach Sarah Brown. She's done a great job with leadership for this team. And of course, they've got their senior Maddie Johnson helping get this team to the Saturday competition. And of course, we've got Ohio State led by their seniors. And with this incredible, incredible vault rotation, they edged out and got into second place, making it to the Saturday final. And then of course, Alabama, went lights out on beam. They had a really strong end of their beam rotation. They had three nine nines in the back end. I know they want to repeat that today. And then we have to mention Oklahoma. They've had such a run this season. They were incredible as well. They went 198 again on Thursday, led by head coach KJ Kindler, looking to repeat and get back to the national championship later in April. As you see there, 11 scores now, 198 or better this year for KJ Kindler's squad. Just a superb, crisp season once again this year. The back-to-back -back national champs as we now dip into the first rotation beginning here on the left side of your screen. We're going to have vault and beam right side of your screen, bars and floor. Then you see also we'll keep our scores for you on the right side of the screen. And overall scores down in the bottom right-hand corner there. First rotation, Ohio State will be on the vault, Alabama on the bars, Oklahoma on the beam, Penn State on the floor. Courtney McCann gets it going on the vault for the Buckeyes, and Chloe LaPercier here on the bars for Bama. Ohio State, Courtney McCann starting her team off so strong. They leading them off with that big sip. That's the Yurchenko pool. It starts from a 9.95. Great leadoff there from Courtney. Also, Penn State, Jessica Johansson coming through for her team as well, nailing that double layout dismount. These teams are serious today. They're ready to go. They want to get to the national championship, and it starts right here. A big stage, a lot of pressure going into it, but as we've spoken to these coaches about, it's going to be key in terms of how you handle that pressure as as Kennedy mentioned there Jessica Johansson on the floor here for Penn State Audrey Davis they call her amazing Audrey leading off on the beam for the Sooners Audrey doing great work for this Oklahoma team on the balance beam She is incredible in this leadoff role. So consistent, time and time again, coming through, putting hit after hit routine, helping really initiate this momentum and energy for the OU beam lineup. 
Oklahoma's won six national championships. They're aiming for another this year. Audrey Davis is going to be a key part of that if they get there. And Audrey absolutely thrilled that dismount. KJ mentioned that they were not their normal selves on Thursday's competition, looking to get back to their usual. At Kennedy, it was uh, definitely a business-like finish for Oklahoma. Of course, they're the number one seed, and they get to this regional final stage again. But there wasn't much celebration. It was back to business, back to how we can be better than the other day, which is pretty scary. It is scary. They went 198 with a not normal competition. You know, they gave away a couple landings. They had a couple wobbles on beam and still had a super high score. This team is just unstoppable. And I made a mistake earlier on bars. That was Alabama Chloe LaCourcier, who had that big stick after a tuck full in. They gave Chloe a 9-7-7-5. Lily Hudson now up on the bars for Alabama. Davis Siegfeld talking there with KJ Kindler, left side of your screen for Oklahoma, gearing up, still awaiting the Audrey Davis score on beam. We'll see what they give Johansson on the floor for Penn State. Lily Hudson coming in clutch for Alabama, nailing that dismount. And she has been such a rock for this team. Very consistent, time and time again, competes poised and confidently. Great example for her team. It's Penn State group seeking their first birth into a national semifinal since 2014. This is the first time they've been, if you weren't with us early on, into this regional final stage since the new postseason format was introduced in 2019. And first time under their head coach, Sarah Brown. By the way, it was a 9-9-5-0 start for Audrey Davis on the beam for Oklahoma. So we'll see how Ava follows that up with her score, see what they end up giving her. They're really happy with the performance there as Grimes is now stepping up on the left side of your screen here for Ohio State, following up what was a 9-7-5-0 for Sydney Washington. Alyssa Kramer finishes up her floor routine on the right side there for the Nittany Lions. Jordan Bowers, you see the Big 12 Gymnast of the Year, gearing up on the left side of the screen. We'll be saying her name quite a bit. She was the all-around champ the other day during the regional semifinal in session two for Oklahoma. And Jason, they, if there is somebody that you want in your lineup, it is Jordan Bowers. Such a fierce competitor, always ready to go. And she is capable of perfection on all four events. And Shania Adams getting another stick for this Alabama team. This is what they need to do if they want to get to the national championships, that elite eight later in April. Dismounts and stuff landings are of utmost importance in this competition. You said to me down the stretch the other day in each of the sessions, it's going to be so paramount to get those landings on point. 
and could be a very big difference maker today. It is going to be the difference maker, Jason. Who has the most sticks, the least amount of wobbles, and the best hit routines are going to get to that Elite Eight competition. Kalia McElligot has been such a staple in this Penn State lineup as well. So strong, a beautiful double pike right there. And Jordan Bowers getting that dismount. Really great work for her there up on the beam. McElligot, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year on the right side of your screen there. A lot of talent all around that we're going to see this evening in Ann Arbor. This arena is stacked with talent. Each one of these teams has so many athletes capable of perfection. They are all striving for it in this meet specifically. A little too much power there on vault. Had that hot back. Ohio State has to get these landings. And oh, a little too much power also for Penn State on floor. Kalia just over rotated that last pass. Had that hop out of it. The judges will take a deduction there. Faith Tor is getting set to step up on the beam for Oklahoma, following up. Three scores of 9-9 nine, nine or, or better here to begin for the Sooners with Audrey Davis, Ava Sigfeld, Jordan Bowers. So right now, you, Kennedy, this is Oklahoma in a nutshell for you. You're taking out that Ava Sigfeld score because you can drop the lowest. Only three gymnasts in, but uh, that's kind of their standard, isn't it? It's definitely their standard. When KJ was talking about getting back to their normal, this is their normal. Consistent nine nines across the board, nine nine plus scores. If you're dropping a nine nine two five, you are in a good position to get to that national championship meet. Maddie Walagora, a very experienced gymnast for Bama, is following up a nine nine from Shania Adams. You saw Amelia Hunley fired up there with her, the assistant coach for Alabama. Amelia has brought so much energy to this Alabama program. And wow, Faith drills it. Another stick for Oklahoma on beam. They have glue in their feet. They are holding on to these dismounts and not letting them go. Proving that they deserve to be at the Elite Eight. Torres was the Big 12 newcomer of the year last year, really built on that. This season now showing up on the biggest of stages, Ava Pedrahita on the right side of your screen on the floor for Penn State. Peyton Harris, who is huge for the Buckeyes down the stretch on Thursday, about to step up for them on the vaults. Waiting on a score, by the way, over on vault right now before Peyton can go. Ava with a huge full twisting double tuck she can put up a big number here for this Penn State team. She's so fun to watch on the floor. Ava is gritty and tough, ready to compete for this Penn State team at all times. Peyton Harris with Ohio State's first 10.0 vault. She does a Yurchenko one and a half, one of their high scores on their Thursday competition. And that should be another great score for Ohio State. Just a shuffle forward with that right foot. Tried to hold on to that landing. That's a blind landing. She can't see where her feet are when they come down to the mat. She has to fill it in the air. Did a great job there. Beautiful work for Ava Pedrahita on the floor as well. I love that she took that double tuck straight to the lunge, really showed the control coming out of that pass. Pat Lavasser now stepping up 
for Alabama, or sorry, for Oklahoma here at the tail end of their beam lineup. Reagan Smith to follow her. You know, Reagan Smith has perfect 10 potential every time she steps up on the beam. Kat does an incredible job of setting Reagan up for a big score after her. Really stunning work there. Her gymnastics is beautiful. Her form is immaculate. And this is one of her best seasons as a senior. Nice job there from Cameron. A little short on that blind pull. The judges want to see that go all the way up to handstand before they go into that dismount. They'll take a small deduction there. Double tuck, though. They are nailing these dismounts, doing their job, really finding these landings. Ashley Johnston, the head coach for Alabama, was happy after that routine. Again, Bama had eight scores of 9-9 nine, nine or higher in the regional semis as Pat Lavasser finishes up over on the beam for Oklahoma. Alabama and OU are going back-to-back -back sticks. Both teams have had, have had at least three sticks in a row so far. They know that this is the work and the effort that it takes to get to the national championship. It starts right here by drilling these landings. Bama's made a regional final in every season since 1982. They're the number two seed in this regional. Oklahoma, the one seed. Drilled by Tori Vetter. Huge Urchango full right there. Stunning form in the air. Her legs were glued together. Great job there. Amani on that opening tumbling class. I couldn't quite tell coming out of it. It looked like she was near that line. I didn't see the flag go up. I don't know if she was out of bounds. All right, on the left side, Reagan Smith, buckle up here because she has been the beam queen in the Big 12. Had her sixth perfect score on beam of the season the other day. Always got to be ready for a potential 10 when Reagan is getting ready to step up on the beam as Imani Herring continues on with her floor routine for Penn State. Imani doing a nice job closing that routine out. And Kat Lavasser has set Reagan up for success. A huge 9975. Reagan could easily do back to back 10s. We've seen her do it this season. She got four 10s in a row earlier in the regular season. I know she's striving for perfection every time she gets on every event, specifically beam. And we've got a lot of talent on our screen right now. Of course, Louisa Blanco up for Alabama on bars. She can put up a big number for them as well. Louisa has qualified for the Olympics for Columbia. Reagan slightly off on that series, did a great job bringing it back on the beam. You saw that hip rise a little bit on the right side. She lowered it back down. And Jason, Louisa is in such a unique position, competing in elite gymnastics and collegiate gymnastics. A tough job. They are two completely different types of gymnastics, and she's doing an impeccable job balancing both providing for this Alabama team. Yeah, Kennedy, she talked about that in one of our recent interviews with her. Break down the difference for me there, college versus elite. College is about consistency and perfection. Getting any skill that you do, you want it as clean and perfect as possible. Elite's a little bit different. Elite is all about the hardest skills, you're competing with Simone Biles, so it's just another level of competition. You have to be able to compete with Simone, so you're throwing out way bigger skills. Louisa has big skills in her collegiate routine as well as her elite routine. And Reagan doing a fabulous job there on the beam, getting that dismount. I believe Oklahoma got all of their dismounts. Great sticks and scores across the board. They're dropping a 9-9-2-5. Whew, this is a good meet for them. Oklahoma off to a phenomenal start. Alabama 
off to a phenomenal start. They gave Tory Vetter, by the way, in that routine you really loved on vault for Ohio State, a 9-9 to anchor that Buckeye lineup. So big finish there for Vetter, who followed up Peyton Harris, who had the 9-8-7-5. You see Isabella Salcedo. It appears as though they are still waiting on a score for Amani Herring on the floor for Penn State before Isabella can go here. Next sexual step up now. Isabella is a joy to watch, especially on floor. Big tumbling. Huge opening double front you saw right there. That's a difficult starting pass. It's a blind landing. You can't see two saltos in the air. And she is so passionate in her floor choreography as well, really playing it up for the judges and her teammates. Great job on this routine so far from Isabella. Beautiful extension right there on that layout step out. Something Bella does really well. Big gymnastics, but also impeccable form. A difficult last tumbling pass there. Three acro elements in a row. Beautifully executed. Really nice work there from Isabella. That'll wrap rotation one. Penn State with a good finish from Salcedo there, and it's Oklahoma. Just absolutely clinical for them, going 9-9 nine, nine consecutively there through the lineup. Kennedy, we saw OU wrap up the Big 12s with an NCAA record score. And, and, I mean, the pace they're on right now, it is just incredible that what they're working with. And KJ Kindler, we talked to her the other day. She said, we need to be better than Thursday. And so far, well, they have been. I would definitely consider a 49-8 in your starting rotation better than your first competition. They should be proud of that. That's a big, big number. They closed it out well with Kat and Reagan really coming in clutch there, but also Audrey starting off the routine and rotation so strong for this OU team. Beautiful work from Kat Lavasser on beam. Reagan as well just nails that dismount. She gets that almost every single time. Strong start for OU. You saw it there. Kat Lavasser goes 9975. Reagan Smith goes 9975. I mean, it, it just was phenomenal through that first rotation for Oklahoma. So we'll see how they back that up. Oklahoma will be on the floor in rotation two. Impressions so far on some of these teams that have advanced? I'm impressed with all of them. And I think that they all deserve to be in this regional final. It's so competitive. It's tough. Every team has talented superstars on their team. So it's who shows up on the day of the competition, ready to stick these landings to get to that elite eight competition later in April this year. We've talked about the keys to handling the pressure in these moments, especially as you get deeper into a meet. We're gearing up for the second rotation here in Ann Arbor. You see by conference there, regional finalists, SEC leading the way with six, and Oklahoma, who we have here, will join the SEC next year, but for now still in the Big 12, your NCAA regional final meet summary. So OU leading after the first rotation, and they were just so smooth. You That finish there, nine nines across the board, Gearing up for rotation two, where OU will be on the floor. It'll be led off by Audrey Davis. Alabama will be on the beam. Ohio State on the bars and Penn State on the vaults. So now let's take a peek at our meet format here. So no more than two events competing simultaneously. Vault and beam will alternate. Alternate bars and floor will alternate. And the team is going in Olympic order with the vault, bars, beam, and floor. Again, two 
of these teams out of the four will advance the NCAA championship meet. So that is the goal for this bunch today as we get into the second rotation. You'll have vault and beam left side of your screen, bars and floor on the right side, vault, bars, beam, and floor. Again, Penn State on the vault there, left side of your screen. Jessica Johansson will lead off for them. Emma Pritchard on the right side of your screen for the Buckeyes leading off their bars line up. Jason, this is going to be a close competition. So you can just see, looking at those scores, all of these teams are close. Ohio State's not that far behind Alabama, and Penn State's not that far behind Ohio State. This Buckeye team under Meredith Paula Civic, Kennedy, it was really fun to watch them and their resurgence on Thursday. They were in third place behind the Sooners and at the time Illinois in that regional, final, regional semifinal, and then were able to jump the Illini in the third rotation. So these, these meets can really come down to the final couple, if not the last rotation, as we saw with Penn State on the left side of your screen. They were able to leapfrog the host Michigan to secure their spot in the regional final. That was in the fourth rotation on Thursday. And a strong start for Jessica Johansson with Penn State. Like you said, Jason, these next three rotations are important. This is anybody's competition. OU's done a great job of leading off with that strong score, but Alabama, Ohio State, and Penn State all still have a chance to get to that Elite Eight, and I know they all want it. Audrey Davis going to be the first floor routine for Oklahoma on the right side of your screen, and Lily Hudson will lead off on beam for Alabama on the left side of your screen. Kennedy, I know you've loved Lily Hudson's development this year. Coach Johnston said she kind of shifts into a different gear, called her uh, a gamer mixed with a steady vibe. She is definitely in gamer mode right now, leading off this Alabama team. Beautiful full turn you saw right there. That is a requirement for all Beamer teams. She just does a great job of inspiring confidence and is steady up on the beam ready to take each skill at a time and set up the rest of the lineup. Audrey Davis, beautiful one and a half front fold there straight into a pose, into her choreography, minimal deduction coming out of that. and just the dismount left for Lily Hudson. It's a blind landing, and she nails it. A great start for Alabama. Good work from Lily Hudson leading this team off. Kennedy, you told me before today you expected to see some good dismounts today. And Hudson's setting the tone there. I'm definitely seeing a lot more sticks today than I saw in the first regional semifinal on Thursday. These teams are getting after it. They know that this is what it takes to get top two at the end of this regional final. Good work from Maddie Johnston there. A slight scoop back on that Yurchenko full. Right side of your screen, Sydney Washington for Ohio State, who, by the way, is an Ann Arbor native back in her hometown, wearing the scarlet and gray. But a homecoming for her, friends and family in the stands watching her here on the bars for Ohio State. Good work there on that pirouette. You could tell coming out of it, she was a little crooked, fought to stay on the bar. Nice job there. Just a small scoop back. I'm not going to give her the stick for that. Nice work, though, from Sydney Washington in that routine. Maddie Wiley, Maddie Wiley Gore following up Lily Hudson's 9-9 to lead things off. How about that? Setting the tone on the beam for Alabama. And there's Belle Johnson on the right side of your screen, the Norman, Oklahoma native who started going to Oklahoma gymnastics meets when she was six years old, now living her dream. 
wearing the leotard. Bell starts with a front layout, front one and a half twist. Oh, and she's out of bounds. The flag is up. The judges will deduct for stepping outside of the floor. You have to remain in the blue. Maddie Walagora, rock solid on beam. Beautiful job on that acro series. Kennedy Maddie Walagora, another Michigan native. She's from Rochester, Michigan, about 40 minutes away from here. She got around 40 family members coming in for this weekend here in Ann Arbor. Really cool connections to the state of Michigan amongst these rosters. It's fun to have that fan support in the crowd. You can feel it. It helps really boost your momentum and your energy going into the meet, seeing people that you know out there in the crowd. It's important. Really clean dismount from Maddie. Just a small hop forward. Great work though. She actually had a fall on the first regional semifinal. Great job today, bouncing back, hitting solidly after Lily Hudson's big nine nine. And this is where she stepped out. She just had so much power coming out of that pass. And that was clearly out. They will take a deduction there. Fortunately, Audrey Davis started this lineup strong with a big nine nine. Aliyah McElligot, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year on the left side of your screen there for Penn State. Tori Vetter, who's had a hot start to the day as well, going on the right side of your screen. Tori Vetter is consistency for this team. She's hitting time and time again. Small step back, small and controlled. Penn State and Ohio State both need to start hitting these landings, really holding it down if they want to stay in contention for this one or two spot today. For Oklahoma, first slight rare mistake, as you mentioned there, Kennedy with a step out of bounds from Bell Johnson, so a 9-7. See if they maybe that's the score they'll end up dropping. You can drop one of your scores and the cumulative scores through each rotation before we add it up. At the end, Ella Burgess getting set to step up on the beam for Bama and Reagan Smith beginning her floor routine for Oklahoma. And Reagan is capable of getting this team back on track. Beautiful opening tumbling pass there. That's an open double tuck. She's so high in the air. She doesn't have to grab. Really gets that hip rise off of the floor. Ella Burgess does a one-arm back handspring into her layout step out. You'll see most, ath most athletes put both hands on the beam. She makes it a little more challenging, just putting one arm on the beam. Had a slight balance check out of it. <gasps> and unfortunately, had that fall on that side aerial. You could just tell she didn't get her foot all the way around on the beam coming out of it. That's gonna be a five tenth end deduction. Final tumbling pass from Reagan. Another stunning pass, double pike, legs glued in the air, toes pointed. Great way to bounce this lineup back from Bell Johnson's 9-7, stepping out of bounds. Really great work from Reagan there. Nice job on Ella's dismount. I know she's going to be disappointed with that fall. They're going to look to Gabby to really get this lineup back on track for this Alabama team. Kennedy, if I'm not mistaken there, I think Reagan Smith's floor music at the end went from, uh, was it folklore to something much more intense? I, <laughs> I couldn't quite catch it. I think the last song is Lover by Taylor Swift. Lover. It's, so when it's, Taylor Swift to Taylor Swift. It's giving Taylor Swift. <laughs> it's giving Swiftie. Taylor vibes. 
Salcedo on the left side of your screen there for Penn State and Peyton Harris going on the right side for Ohio State. Beautiful work from Isabella on the ball. That was actually improved from her Thursday competition. I felt like her hop out was much bigger than that one. That was small and controlled, and that's a difficult ball, so really good job there. And Peyton Harris drilling the landing for Ohio State. That should be another decent score for the men. Really coming in clutch with these last couple of routines there. That's what Penn State did on Thursday. They came in clutch at the right point in time to overtake Michigan and secure their spot into what is their first regional final since the new postseason format began. Gabby Gladio saw her talking there with her head coach, Ashley Johnston, and now Pat Lavasser also awaiting her turn on the right side of your screen for Oklahoma. And how about Reagan Smith, 9950 after Bell Johnson inadvertently stepped out, so she got the 9-7. Looks like they are going to drop that one, and just an excellent bounce back from Reagan Smith now set up Lasser. Reagan put in good work in that floor routine. A big number for OU. Easy to really feed off that number for Kat Lavasser, and she can put up another big number here as well. Huge full twisting double tuck straight to the stick. Beautifully done. Kat Lavasser's form is just unlike anyone else's. She has really stunning lines, but also extension throughout her legs from her dance through to her tumbling. And Gabby looking to get this team back on track. They're going to want to drop Ella Burgess's 9 3. She needs a hit here. Huge back handspring layout two foot. She sticks that every time. It's so impressive to me. That is difficult. You have to have a big hip rise off of the beam to really get that layout to two feet. And she does an excellent job every single time of nailing that. White balance check out of that front aerial. That's all right. Her job right now is to stay on the beam and get this lineup back on track. Beautiful work from Kat Lavasser on the floor. Feeding off of Reagan's score and routine. And Gabby finds the landing. Chest a little low, but she held on to it. No deduction for a foot movement. And she got this team back on track. She's hyped about that, and she should be. Will drop that score prior to Gladio and then Alabama beam lineup. So interesting to see how that develops there. Meanwhile, Nicole Riccardi, two-time second team, all Big Ten, going on the right side of your screen. Amani Herring, left side of your screen for Penn State. She grew up in a Penn State family. Her dad, Kim, was a, a football standout from 1993 to 96 for the Nittany Lions. Amani had that shuffle back. Nicole had that step forward. Other than that, Nicole's routine was very beautiful. Both Ohio State and Penn State need to start nailing these landings, though. They're giving some steps and tenths away. They've got to find these landings if they want to be in contention for the Elite Eight. Faith Torres, really capable of a 10 anytime she steps onto the floor, do her routine. Here she goes on the right side of your screen for Oklahoma. Faith is a fun competitor to watch. She's so chill on the side, but when she steps up to do her routine, she's ready to go. Wow. That was her best double layout ever. That was perfection. We might see another 10. <laughs> I mean, that was really stunning. Shania Adams with a great front aerial right there, setting up her acro series, drills it straight to the beam. 
She is a really pretty beam worker. Her choreography and extension is impressive. She dances well on top of the beam. Perfection on Faith Torres's leaps as well. And that was a stunning routine from Faith Torres. That's going to be a huge number. And Shania with the stick. Alabama doing a great job getting their lineup back on track. It was kind of a race to who could have the stunning finish there between Adams and Torres. Really fun watching those two side by side. As Pedro Hita is getting ready to go on the vault to anchor that lineup for Penn State. It'll be an important vault, too, for them. As you see, they likely want to drop Amani Herring's score. She does a big vault half on front pike off. Blue in her feet. Holds on to that landing. Shows off that stick. They needed that score. She absolutely delivered for her team, and that is what Ava Pedrahita does well for this Penn State team. She comes in clutch when they need her. Alexis Hankins with a big opening release move right there as well. She needs to find this dismount. Great handstand all the way up right there. Double layout. Slight foot. Maybe it was a stick. I'm not quite sure. I think her left foot moved a little bit if I'm being incredibly picky. But wow, the rest of that routine was really nice. Peyton Harris, who got a 9-9 on the bars yesterday or on Thursday for Ohio State, picked up the 9-9 again. So she was huge in that lineup once again for the Buckeyes. We'll see what they give Hankins. Meanwhile, speaking of capabilities to get a 10 each and every time, Jordan Bowers is going to step on the floor for Oklahoma and Luisa Blanco will anchor the beam lineup for Alabama. A ton of talent side by side here. Both Jordan and Luisa are capable of tents on each of these events. Jordan Bowers opens with a front double twist right here to a front tuck. And that was pretty perfect. Straight to the finish. Lisa Blanco returning perfection on beam as well. Front aerial beautifully done. Legs so straight and extended in the air. And Jordan Bowers finding another landing out of that double pike. Big series for Luisa Blanco. Back handspring layout step out. Nice job staying on that front foot and in the lunge. Both of these athletes have really stepped into leadership roles for their team, leading on and off the floor. Kennedy, was that a bit of a save there? It was a save there, Jason. She was off in that left shoulder, kind of foot on a little sideways, but she fought to keep it on the beam, just like she fought to get that stick. And that's what Luisa does incredibly well, fighting for her teammates through her routines to do the best job that she can do. So we'll see what score they end up giving Luisa for her beam routine and then on the floor is still awaiting Jordan Bowers' score. She anchored that lineup for Oklahoma. It was Oklahoma leading, after, leading the way after the first rotation. This is Pedra Hida on the vault for Penn State. 
This was huge from Ava. I love how her legs are so straight in the air. Finds that landing. That's tough because, again, that's a blind landing. She cannot see where her feet are coming down to the floor. She has to feel it in the air. Did a great job not anticipating the landing, just waiting on it like she does in practice. Really excellent work from Ava. Penn State seeking a first national semifinal since 2014. And all the Penn State fans have come out, including the dads with abs, as they like to go by. You can see the shirts tell the story. And... Kennedy, I, I came up with the decision that I don't want to buy a shirt from them because I couldn't rock it like they can. But this is a group that has been bringing the heat this week, and they've loved what their Penn State team has done to get to this stage in the regional final. Their first time being in the regional final stage under their head coach, Sarah Brown. But we're going to have the third rotation coming up pretty soon here in Ann Arbor, getting into the clutch moments in the Michigan regional this season and with attempt to go for a three-peat. They've won each of the last two national titles. One of the all-time great programs shifting over to the SEC next season. That'll be an exciting development for them and within the sport. But right now, their primary focus is this moment right here in Ann Arbor and getting to the next moment. There wasn't a ton of emotion after the semifinal on Thursday. It was, we got to improve and they did that out of the gates from rotation one, and their goal is to get back to that national title and win one again this year. KJ Kindler has elevated this Oklahoma program to such a high level. And that's something that they do very well, Jason, is staying in the moment, not relishing, even if it's good. I asked KJ Kindler earlier this week about that big 198.95 score that they got, how she felt, and she said, it's over. And she's right. It was over. She's focused on the next thing, and KJ Kindler really excels at that. Like you said, it's about turning the page to the next step. I saw Reagan Smith the other, with, other day get a 10 on the beam. Uh, that highlight was moving around the internet. We'll move along to the third rotation. Getting into crunch time here at the regional final in Ann Arbor. Left side of your screen, again, we have vaults and beam. That's Faith Torres for Oklahoma. And then Jessica Johansson has already started up on the bars for Penn State on the right side of your screen. Faith, a lot of power out of that vault, had that big hop and step forwards. And yesterday, or two days ago on Thursday, head coach KJ Kindler said that they had struggled kind of in the beginning with finding the landings. They started on vault. I know here she really wants to focus on getting these sticks because this team is capable of sticking all of their vaults. Well, today, to begin on the beam in rotation one for Oklahoma, it was 9-9 nine, nine or higher across the board. And just a superb start to set the tone. As you see, right side of your screen, Maddie Walagora will be going for Alabama on the floor where the Crimson Tide now reside. And left side of your screen, Ohio State's Emma Pritchard leading off on the beam for the Buckeyes. Emma did a solid job on Thursday as well, leading off this team, setting them up for success. A confident athlete. She gets up there and does her job. She knows what she's doing. She knows what her team needs from her. Emma also led off on the bars for Ohio State in the prior rotation. Emma excels at that. In that first position role, she likes it. She thrives in it. And she is putting in good work on this Beaver team as well. Really leading off this OSU team strong. Alongside Maddie on the floor. Starting off this Bama floor rotation. Tried to find that landing out of that round off one and a half. Small hop forward. But when we were talking to head coach Meredith Paula Civic, she said that she wants Emma to take a hop forward. She struggled this season with having a step backwards, trying too hard for that stick. They would rather see her take that hop forward, even though it's a deduction, rather than the bigger deductions that would be the hop backwards. 
here well is one of her strengths is the vault. She's going to try to follow up Faith Torres' 9-8. It led off for Oklahoma. Big year take a one and a half from Kira Wells. Nice job, minimal hop out of that vault. Those are the landings that KJ Kindler is looking for from this OU team. Gonna be the difference down the stretch here. By the way, after the third, after the second rotation, it was Oklahoma leading the way with Alabama in second behind them, Ohio State behind Alabama and Penn State in the fourth spot. Remember, the top two will advance to the NCAA championship meet as Maddie Johnston finishes up her bars routine for Penn State. Maddie Johnston does a great job with that bar routine right there. A little leg form in some of her release moves fought to find that landing and hold on to it. Good effort there for Maddie. Alexis Hankins about to step up on the beam for Ohio State. Emma did a good job before her setting her up for success, opening this lineup with a strong 9-8 routine. Hankins, uh, go back to her high school days in Omaha, Nebraska, former 2016 state beam champion during her high school days. Nice front toss there from Alexis. Does a good job of taking deep breaths before each of her routines and each of her skills, staying normal throughout. Good work there on her leap combination. Split was in 180 degrees. The judges need to see it at 180 degrees. Limit deductions. Nice effort to stick from Alexis. She fought to dig those heels and toes into the ground. We'll see if the judges decide to give her that stick, but Ohio State is doing a good job keeping these beam routines consistent and on the beam. Alexis has loved the beam ever since high school. See Jordan Bowers, very determined look on her face about to take flight on the vault following up what was a 9-9 from Wells before her. Jordan Bowers is fierce, capable of a 10 on this event. Small step forward. Beautiful form throughout there. Her legs are always glued together. We've seen Bowers hit a 10 on vault this season. We'll see what they give her. When that score comes in, Peyton Harris was huge in the third rotation for Ohio State on Thursday. She's awaiting a score at the moment from Hankins over on the beam. And the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, McElligot, wraps up her bars routine. Nice job from Kalia there, gluing those hills together. She had a pirouette in the middle of her routine that was slightly off to the side. Nice job staying on the bar and fighting to get it centered. They will take a deduction there, though, for not pirouetting on top of the bar. She was a little bit too far past there. See Jamison Sears talking with Alabama assistant coach Amelia Hunley there. One thing I love about Jamison Sears is just the energy she brings to this sport and the genuine love that she brings to it. Even the, the individual qualifiers the other day were going, and, of course, their teammates aren't there on Thursday, some of the individual qualifiers. So Sears was one of the primary voices you heard cheering on those individual qualifiers from schools that, of course, aren't Alabama. But that's the type of young woman she is, just so supportive, so energetic, and so loving. 
just such a fun competitor competitor to watch, but backs it up with amazing gymnastics, huge opening double layout right there. I think head coach Ashley Johnston said she Johnson said that she has helium in her legs, ready to flow on all the events in her skills. She just gets so much rise and height off of the floor. Peyton Harris closing with a round off double twist. Oh, I love that dismount. She did the same exact thing on Thursday. She drilled it just like that. I love that she came to this competition in the final and did the exact same thing. Really great work there from Peyton. Harris bringing the same clutch energy as you see Kat Lavasser now step up to vaults for Oklahoma. They gave Bowers a 9.875. Cat stuck this cold on Thursday. See if we get a repeat. Oh, feet too far in front of her. Took those two steps back. They're going to take a deduction there. And they're probably going to want to count Faith Torres's 9.8. I think Cat's deduction is going to be a little bit bigger with those two steps backwards. If the judges see steps, but on that one and a half vault specifically, they want to see you step forward, not backwards. It shows that you had amplitude and power off the table if you take a step forward. If you're stepping backwards, it shows that you weren't high enough, really didn't get that pop that you needed off the table. See Gabby Galantine coming up here for Penn State. Gabby has a nice routine for Penn State. Put one up, put up one of their biggest scores on Thursday. A transfer from Florida. She is ready to compete for this Penn State team. Bringing in SEC experience. You saw that pirouette again was out of hand stand. You have to nail it on top of the bars with zero deduction. No deduction on that stuck landing, though, out of that double layout. Legs were glued together in the air, finds the dismount. Kennedy, you mentioned Gabby's time at Florida Penn State. This was their first now back-to-back -back regionals for them. But for her, it, it's been four straight years. She had two at Florida, and she's been a part of the back-to-back -back appearances with Penn State. So she brings a ton of experience to this stage for them. And like you said, a really nice finish to her bar routine there. So we'll await that score as Luisa Blanco is now getting set to go on the floor for Alabama, right side of your screen. And Vetter trying to follow up a really good 9-9 on the beam for Ohio State that Peyton Harris had prior to her. Lisa opens with a strong double pike here. Well executed, beautiful form throughout. And Tori Vetter, also beautiful form on that straddle quarter. Finds that one and a half stick off the beam. Back-to-back -back six for this Ohio State team. Really doing a good job here on beam, putting in consistent high scores. The Hannah Shively about to go on the vault for Oklahoma. She's a Michigan native, Kimball, Michigan native. Her mom, Melinda, was a collegiate gymnast at Central Michigan. Her family owns a gym here in the state of Michigan. Big front pike half. She got it on Thursday, and she's got that stick again today. Hannah is super consistent on that ball. You want her in your lineup if you want to see a stick. And Louisa closing out that routine so well, slapping the floor, hyped about it as she should be. That was really nice work there from Louisa. You see the smile on Louisa's face. One thing she's done this year is really detach from outcome and simply go through the sport that she loves without thinking too much about the outcome and her leadership of course so important in Alabama's postseason 
Idrahito right side of your screen for Penn State, getting the tail end of their bars lineup. And Hodges left side of your screen there for Ohio State. All of a sudden, the Buckeyes have put up back-to-back nine nines with Better and Harris prior to her. So we'll see what Ella can do here. This Ohio State team is really stepping up in the Saturday competition, doing a good job. And Ava, nice work there on her release moves. Fighting to get that pirouette on top of the bar. Big dismount from Ava there. Huge stick. They needed that score. They needed that routine. Good work from Ava. The two Big Ten teams on your screen here trying to be the bracket busters. Uh, Ohio State, Kennedy, I've had a lot of fun watching this group as well over the last few days. I have to. Ohio State's really stepped up this week, this season really, delivering gymnastics consistently. Standing gainer layout step out. Difficult skill there. Well executed from Ella. And Lily opening with a beautiful opening tumbling pass there. Front double, that was awesome. A little too much steam out of that round off one and a half. Took a controlled step forward. They are doing their job though on beam. Ohio State is hitting routine after routine. They've got five hits. Great scores so far. Gotta love the Sweet Home Alabama portion of Lily Hudson's floor music. Ava up now on vault for OU. She struggled with this vault on Thursday. She actually sat it down. Better than Thursday, still a little bit of hyperextension in her knees coming out of that. You really want to absorb when you hit the mat. You have to have a little bit of bend in your knees to control and come out of the skill safely. It looks like she's kind of anticipating wanting to go after that stick, but definitely better than her Thursday performance on vault and Lily Hudson closing that routine strong. Courtney McCann, the freshman from Frisco, Texas on the left side of your screen here about to anchor the beam lineup for Ohio State in her first regional final appearance the freshman and Cassidy Rushlow right side of your screen gonna anchor the bars lineup for Penn State and Courtney's teammates have really set her up in a fantastic position here to just go full out they have five hits so she can really explode off the beam and she does on that incredibly difficult round off layout two foot on the beam that is a difficult series Cassidy wants to find this landing, and she found it. Great stick and effort from Cassidy throughout that routine. Penn State really putting in the work in those last couple of scores, getting those nine nines in there. That's what it takes in a competition like this to get the job done. Kennedy, we talked about it in our calls with coaches this week. You see Courtney on the left side of your screen. Why not have a freshman in a big spot like this? You want to have experience in a spot like this. And luckily, Courtney is so consistent on beam that they feel comfortable putting her in that anchor role. And her teammates have stepped up time and time again, especially this season, to deliver gymnastics to set her up for success in that back part of the lineup. Gabby opening there with a full, huge, full twisting, double tuck. Stuck, no step back to the lunge there, just held her feet to the ground.
Jason, I'm wondering if Gabby's having such an incredible competition today. Do you think she played spike ball before she came out on the floor today? I think they did. It's it's a part of the Alabama routine pre-meet, the annual spike ball game, and they they get competitive too. Like we could call their spike ball games before we call the meet. And one of the most competitive for them is Gabby, ready to compete on and off the floor. She just wants to win. Well done from Gabby there on that routine, following up Lily Hudson's 995. Really nice job there. We'll see what they give Gabby. It appears as though it'll remain Oklahoma and Alabama as one, two after three rotations here, but we'll await that score and confirm it with you. Meanwhile, we'll bring you back in. Jason Ross Jr. alongside Kennedy Baker will send two teams to the NCAA championship meet after this upcoming fourth rotation. Kennedy, for now, let's talk Ohio State and those nine nines that happened in the midst of the rotation there. Buckeyes have really stepped up today once again. They had a big theme rotation. All six routines were hit and they were executed well. Their gymnasts are ready to go today and this meet is not over. Huge round off double twist for Payton returning that dismount the same way she did on Thursday. And of course, a beautiful round off one and a half stick there. They are just really stepping up and into their own for this competition. All righty. Well, two teams will advance. Let's find out. See, we will have a fantastic crew for you. So that is the goal. That is where everyone wants to get to. But first, you got to book your ticket to get there. And we're into the final rotation here in Ann Arbor where we find out which two teams will book their ticket to the NCAA semis again April 18th on ESPN2. So been a fun day. Regional final meet summary here. OU has led after each rotation. They had an incredibly strong start and have backed it up since then. And behind them are the Crimson Tide of Alabama. So Lily Hudson go 9-9-5-0, a season high on the floor for her. So that was huge. And we'll see again this meet, as Kennedy said, not over yet. We saw changes in the fourth rotation on Thursday. Kennedy, no reason why we can't see it again today. Absolutely. Gymnastics always comes down to that last rotation, and it can be anybody's day someone can step up someone can have mistakes so we'll see what happens with this last rotation underway see the nittany lions taking a deep deep breath with their head coach sarah brown they're on the stage for the first time under sarah brown and now the final rotation getting underway it'll be alabama on the vault oklahoma on the bars penn state on the beam and ohio state on the floor Jamison Sears getting ready there to lead off on the vault in the big spot. Freshman and then Daniel Sievers for Oklahoma will lead off on the bars for the Sooners. Kennedy, these conversations you're seeing, like the ones we just saw with Penn State, you see on the right side of your screen with Oklahoma. What are you saying as a team right now going into a final rotation? It looks like Audrey Davis there is hyping up her team. She did the same thing on Thursday. Audrey has taken on such a leadership role. She's telling them, you need to go out and do your normal. You have to do your job. And they know that, and they're ready. Look at Kate, Kat smiling to Audrey. She knows that she needs to do her job, and she's ready to deliver, just like Jameson did right there. Huge Urchenko full stuck cold. Great way to lead off this Alabama program. They missed some landings on vault on the first regional semifinal. They called Jamison Sears a firecracker of energy for the Alabama squad. You see it there. That's why they want her leading off the vault. Ava Pedrojito will lead off beam for Penn State. Danny with beautiful form there. It's 
closes with a full twisting double tuck. She wants to find this landing. And she found it. Ava recovering well, staying up on that beam. You could tell she had a major balance check there coming out of that acro series. Good fight, though, to stay on the beam. You never know what can happen in your beam lineup. They might need your score, even if you have a major mistake or fall. So you want to finish the routine well, even if it didn't start the way that you wanted it to. Danielle Sieber is one of four kids in her family. Has three siblings. Her sister, Megan, competed at Iowa State in gymnastics. Meanwhile, you see on the floor for the Buckeyes, Savannah Gonzalez leading off for them. And this is the Euphoria-inspired routine here, Kennedy. Yeah, I'm going to give Savannah my favorite choreography of this regional finals. I love the way she dances. It's a lyrical routine. She takes her time with the movements, and she drills her passes just like that in the beginning. I had to actually compliment head coach Meredith Paula Civic on her choreography. She helps with the choreography on floor, and she did an excellent job this year with these routines, really fitting each athlete. Big step forward for Grin. I know she wanted to get that landing. Luckily, that's a year take of one and a half, so it starts from a 10.0. Last pass here for Savannah. One and a half front layout. You can tell she waited a second extra before she went into that pass, really taking her time, making sure she was prepared. Good start for the Ohio State team with Savannah's routine. Ohio State was so strong through the middle of that third rotation with Harrison better on the beam. We'll see what they end up giving Gonzalez leading off on the floor there. Cap Vassar, right side of your screen for Oklahoma following up Seavers. How about that start at 9-9 on the bars from Seavers? And then Ashley Mall saw her talking there with her head coach, Sarah Brown, before she stepped up on the beam for Penn State. Nice job for Ashley on that Afro series. Her job is to get this lineup back on track. Pat Levesseur putting in beautiful work on bars. Stunning dismount right there. Textbook double tuck. Ashley doing a good job of staying in control, not anticipating her elements, waiting on them, doing what she does in practice. Just the dismount left. Nice effort, just a small scoop forwards. Really good job getting this lineup back on track after Ava's uncharacteristic mistake in the beginning. Riccardi, senior from New York, meanwhile has taken the floor for Ohio State and now Alabama, you see there on the vaults, Lily Hudson stepping up on the stage Lily Hudson does a big Yurchenko one and a half here. Good effort. Had a lot of pop off that table. <laughs> She's hyped with assistant coach Justin Spring there and just had that hop forward. But again, great way to get it back on track. Talked about Amelia Hunley earlier. Justin Spring was also another big addition for the Alabama staff he brings a boatload of energy olympic experience to the table for the crimson tide they just have a, a really fun staff as kalia mcgelliga is about to go on the beam behind pedra hita 
at the score they wanted to start off with. Nice close to Nicole's routine. Really solid work there on that last double tuck. Faith Torres coming up for Oklahoma here. They ended up giving Lavasser a 9925. So really strong start on the bars. Thanks to Lavasser, who's a two-time NCAA first team All-American on the bars, living up to her standard there. We'll see how Torres can follow it up here. Talia with a beautifully done triple series right there. She's a little bit off, did a great job of covering how off she was and staying on the beam. Really minimal deduction. Faith Torres fighting through that pirouette. A little leg separation they'll take for that. A little pass handstand they'll deduct for that. But good effort to stay on the bar. You could tell that was crooked coming out and lost a little bit of steam going into that double layout. Had that step forward. Well done for Kalia. Big 10 freshman of the year for a reason. Has been a rock for this team delivering routine after routine. Kennedy, a really bright future head for Kalia. We were told to flip it over to uh, bars. She made up her own bar routine at Big Ten Championships, right? But they said, here, we're, we're going to stick to the tr traditional bar routine. But uh, just showcases her creativity and love for the sport. As you see that on the right side of your screen now, the Ann Arbor native, Sydney Washington. Lore is definitely a specialty for her on vault that was actually chloe lacorsia who had that big step out of her one and a half and oh she just missed that had her feet too far in front of her had that low squat they're going to deduct for that coming out of that vault nice double pike from sydney washington on floor Another fun routine for Ohio State. Great job on her second pass. Really had a lot of control coming out of that. Also likes that she got that lead combination all the way around. Sometimes gymnasts will cheat their feet a little bit. She clearly got them all the way around. The judges want to see that. Sydney closing with a big double tuck. Nice work from Amani there on her acro series. Front toss through to back handspring, step out. Sydney closing so strong with that double tuck. She put up a big number on Thursday's competition. That should be another one here today. Awesome job from Amani there on that side flip. Showing the control she has coming out of the skill. It's difficult to land sideways on the beam because you can't see the beam. It's already hard when you're going forwards, but to land sideways, you really have to trust your awareness in the air, just like you do on those front dismounts, and she trusted it. Good work from Amani. Reagan with a big opening release move right there. She is such a good bar swinger, really waits on the bar, doesn't anticipate her skills. Like that dismount, nailed that, glued her feet to the ground. Great job coming back from Faith Torres's routine. Each time for Oklahoma, when there's been maybe a slight blimp, they bounced right back to see Luisa Blanco now stepping up on the vault for Alabama. By the way, if you thought Alabama was maybe going out of order earlier. They weren't. They had entered a lineup change properly. It just wasn't conveyed properly. So they were going in the correct order. Now it's fixed on the screen in this vault lineup as Blanco goes. They will not have any sort of deduction for that. They were going in the proper order if you might have saw a change on the right side of your screen. Better working on the floor for Ohio State, right side of your screen, and 
Salcedo still awaiting a score for Herring. Now the score for Herring is in, and it's a 9-9, the highest for Penn State on the beam so far. Corey did a nice job on our opening tumbling pass. Good extension throughout our leaps, clearly hitting that 180 degree, 180 degree split, exactly what the judges want to see. And Isabella has a unique beam routine. She does different skills. Some are very difficult. She does a standing front tuck in her routine right here. Incredibly challenging. Nails it just like that almost every time. Just so consistent throughout this lineup. Isabella is also capable of putting up a big number on this event as well. A big lunge from Tori Vetter. I'd like the fight to stay in and to stay on your feet. She tried to control it. She just had so much power coming out of it. Well done, though, just going straight back to the lunge, not taking extra steps outside. And Isabella with a beautiful layout front full off the beam. Just such a performer, always ready to go. Isabella does a great job for this Penn State team. So now you're down to that final beam for Penn State when they get back up. Meanwhile, a lot of talent side by side on the screen here. Gabby Gladio, left side of your screen for Bama. And Audrey Davis stepping up. Amazing Audrey on the bars for OU. Following up a 9-9 from Reagan Smith. Gabby dug those hills in. They'll take a deduction for that arm circle. Really fought to get that landing. And Audrey Davis, perfection on bars. Legs are glued together. She is one of the best bar swingers in the country. Getting a 10 earlier this season. Well-deserved, putting in consistent 9-9-7-5 routines. Liked that dismount better than the one that she did on Thursday. Definitely got more of that half twist around. I liked that routine much better than Thursday. Those handstands were all the way up. That should be a really, really good score for Audrey. Good work there. Wow, so we'll see what they end up giving Audrey. Await that score with much anticipation. Maddie Johnston about to anchor on Bean for Penn State. And Peyton Harris on the right side of your screen on the floor trying to follow up what was a 9-9-2-5. The best score so far for Ohio State on the floor from Tori Vetter. Here's Peyton Harris for the Buckeyes. Great job on Maddie's acro series right there. She's following up Isabella's big 9925. Put her in a great position. Fought to stay on the beam, had those arm circles coming out of it. You could tell coming out of that skill, she was tilted in that left shoulder, had to recorrect it on the right side and get it back on the beam. Stunning front double twist front tuck for Peyton Harris. By the way, if you joined us later, you're popping back and forth between regional final locations with the Arkansas location underway now. It was Oklahoma leading the way, entering this fourth rotation with Alabama behind them and Penn State behind Bama and Ohio State there behind Penn State. So Oklahoma has led the way after each of the first three rotations. The top two teams will advance to the NCAA semis. Paige Harris has done an excellent job through this routine so far. Last pass here, double pike. Beautifully done. That was incredible. I love the control she had coming out of that. She really showed that off. She should be excited about that. That was a great routine. Peyton Harris's impeccable weekend continues. She has been phenomenal for the Buckeyes and been so, so clutch for them in different events. Speaking of clutch, Jordan Bowers about to anchor 
on bars for Oklahoma. Here's your Big 12 Gymnast of the Year. With an NQS of 9975. Jordan Bowers is consistently getting perfection on this event. If the athletes score a 9975, that means at least one judge gives them a 10, and she has gotten a 10 on this event. Really nice routine so far from Jordan. Just the dismount left, full twisting double tuck. The tiniest of shuffles back with that left foot. She tried to hold on to it. What a competition, though, from Jordan. She was the all-around winner on Thursday in that night session here in Ann Arbor. Again, Oklahoma, the one seed. Next on floor, Current head coach, KJ Kindler, there. Now you see on floor for Ohio State. Ella Hodges, Massachusetts native, about to wrap things up for the Buckeyes. Ella has brought so much experience to this Ohio State team. In her fifth year, she's taken on such a leadership role, really helping support her teammates. Pike right there. That was perfect. I love that she held on to that before she stepped into the lunge. Really nice amplitude there on her leaps. Had so much rise off the floor, showing off those full splits. One more pass to go for Ella. This is a beautiful routine. Front Rudy to lay out, step out from one and a half twist. Just great execution overall from Ella. Really good work closing out that Ohio State floor rotation. Coach Paula Civic so proud of her group and how this program has developed since she took over in 2018. All of these teams came to perform today. You can see on the right, if you look at those scores, all of them scored higher than they did on their day one competition. Really stepping up here today. Elevated their game in for a 12th time this season. Oklahoma going to go 198 or higher. And you see Alabama will be that second ticket with our scores coming in to the NCAA semifinal to book their spot in Fort Worth. Oklahoma and Alabama will get the first two tickets punched out of our four regional sites to move on. What a regional this has been. You see the emotion on the faces of the tide as they know that they're going to move on. Remember, Thursday, April 18th is when the semis will start.